Good morning. Thank you for uh, allowing me this podium this morning and thank you for your kind attention. It's great to be the first speaker because I will set the tone. So that's either a great thing or a disaster. Hold your applause, we'll decide in a minute here. Um, so I wanna motivate why this matters. If you haven't looked at the data, and this is somewhat dated, but if you haven't looked at the data recently, look at the shift in terms of where R&D dollars come from. Mostly from commercial, and an ever decreasing percentage from the USG. So if we're not leveraging those trends collectively, then we're not actually addressing mission as we should. Here's another interesting slide. Again, all publicly available information. So this goes through 2016. I'll point out here, for those that can't see, there's a crossover point, oh yeah, in 2019. So folks, we can't keep doing business the way we have been. It can't be strictly capitalized through government funds. And so the innovation that Yogesh talked about, I'm gonna challenge you to think of in another way, which is how do we interact as colleagues and partners to address what is clearly a national security issue. So we, we are concerned about the same things for those of you that don't know, that haven't watched any movies. What CIA does is we're collectors and we do 90% of the PDB, which is the President's Daily Brief, which goes to the senior leadership across the USG on a daily basis to inform policy. So my job, which is the best job in Washington, I think, is to figure out how to bring technology to bear at exactly the right time to enable those two things to be world class, best in class. And we partner with the people in this room to do that because this is a team sport. So these things that you see here and everybody knows the hype curve are exactly the things that we care about. Some of these that I'll highlight for you, IOT, Internet of Things. Think about our job and what kind of collection we do and what kind of challenges that presents. I just bought a Tesla. I heard Yogesh talking about it. And my key is my cell phone. I am also a collector for Tesla because they can tell what, work, what works in terms of roads. They, they get an update as I drive about what roads are open and what roads, roads are closed. Think about the implications of that for the business that we're in. AI, another big one, I will hit on that later because it's such a topic of interest about what we are concerned about there, but think about as we produce the President's Daily Brief and this flow of information is coming at us. Can we touch everything? Can we search every database by hand in order to reach an expert conclusion? Probably not gonna scale. So we gotta think very differently about how we solve these things. Everybody's familiar with this Moore's Law. Um, it's gonna keep running out and really probably classically it has, but we keep figuring out ways to make it look like it hasn't, right? It's true. But everybody can do this. This is not unique to the US. It used to be, but it's not anymore. Internet of Things, I talked about that, right? The interesting implication of this is that nobody wants to build expensive infrastructure anymore because that takes a lot of capital and the IRR isn't high enough for our shareholders, right? So everybody wants to be up in the stack. Let's be up in the stack. There are implications from a national security perspective, not mine to solve, but let's all move up in the stack. That's where the value is. And big data analytics, again, shows you look at the, the annual returns. That's a lot better than an infrastructure provider, right? So here's what I want us to think about. There's a lot of IP locked up in this crowd. Why is the only reason that it gets to production because the government funds it? Why have we locked ourselves in that model? It's a good rhetorical question, but I hope your lawyers are thinking about it as well as your leadership, because I'm here to tell you that because the technology has been democratized, largely, that I would be very open to have conversations about freeing IP up to get it into production 
if it benefits the economy, because that benefits national security. And that's a challenge to all the business people in the office, or in the audience, to think about how would we do that? Because continuing to look to us to bring all of that great technology from the bench to production, given the curves we just looked at, is that the definition of insanity? Because it's not gonna change. And we, I don't think we can ask for more percentage of the GDP to come to this, this part of the government. So I'm gonna go through a couple of different models, but these are just exemplars that are in place already. I'd love to have a fur further conversation. So, I, so IARPA, for those of you that know IARPA, it's grant-based partnering. It tends to do some basic research, but mostly applied. I'll tell you, CIA does almost all applied. We partner with IARPA and DARPA and others to do basic research that we're interested in. But that's one place that you might think about engaging with us if you haven't classically. And here's the areas that they invest in. Guess what? They're areas we're all very, very interested in. And this is all from their website. Please feel free to check it out. Because if you're a BD person and you're not looking at these websites, you're probably not doing everything you should be for your company. InQtel, another model. And this one, it makes people in this, normally in this crowd, uncomfortable. But why aren't we talking to more VCs or equity partners about freeing our IP and getting it to production? Because folks, I think it's easy for shareholders to understand 0.8 multipliers on run rate versus times 22, which is what Google and others get in terms of valuation. And there are companies that know how to do this that are playing in both camps. And I think we've got to explore these kinds of models. This is real innovation on behalf of the nation. Because who's great at millimeter wave? Oh, that's right, that would be this community. What is 5G incredibly reliant on? Millimeter wave, that's right, that's this community. Why not? So, InQtel, venture-based partnering. Board seat, no equity dilution. It's a really light touch, but what it does is it gives us access to a bunch of emerging technology that we don't have to fully fund and that we don't own the O&M tail on for the rest of our lives. Not a bad deal. And the thing is, everybody here gets our mission in a way that these, venture, uh, these startups don't. So if we all want to move up the stack, there's plenty of work. And it's really interesting and good work. And for those of you that work with us, you know this but it'll change us thinking, our thinking about how we interact. And that's one of the reasons that we adopted cloud, because infrastructure, the IRRs ain't worth it. That's a technical term. And then there are a bunch of labs that come with InQtel. You come in with your IP, you leave with IP. What we do is we set up problems, we get the best and the brightest, that's a combined government, commercial, and partner team and take on hard problems in an unclassified but meaningful environment. And I'm gonna just flip through these because again, it's on their website. So what's the role of USG? It used to be that we were the ones that funded R&D and we brought things to production. And we still have a role because there are things that absolutely will not get funded any other way. It used to be, for example, that space was the domain of governments. Look around. How many of you have been here long enough to remember Ada and gossip? How did that work out for us? There are legitimately things that we need to do that nobody else is going to do, right? There are phenomenologies that you are working on here that don't make sense commercially today. So there are unique roles that we absolutely must be responsible for, cradle to grave, at least for now. But there are a whole bunch of other things that we've got to be riding these waves or it will be irresponsible on our part. 
and irresponsible use of taxpayer dollars. And we've got to think about that differently. So if you're not familiar with Eric Von Hippel's work, highly recommend it. It's an easy read. It's got a lot of math. You can skip the math. The point is that there is science behind being a great lead user. And I will tell you, when I was at AOL, a lead user that was good was worth a thousand times any other user because they told me what direction I needed to go to attract the next big wave. So I think government can be lead users. I think where we partner with you, the IP is eye-watering. And that's the stuff we got to figure out how to get into production. And then our responsibility is to be early adopters of the things that others can innovate faster than we can. And that's different from us than it has been. But it's time we stood up to it. So from an AI, and I, I will, uh, that, that was my big challenge. For those of you that are just strictly here for the AI piece, so think about what we do. We provide the PDB to senior leadership every day. So if we're not ingesting and using all of the data that's available to us, we're doing less than the job that we should be. And we have, folks, we have too many stovepipes today. And I love what Yogesh said about looking across the NGIT enterprise and figuring out how to leverage that and deliver it to customers, because that's what we need. We need everybody to take that stance and not have it be, oh, here's a silo here, here's a silo here, here's a silo here. Good luck, government. Get it right. Advise the president correctly. We have to get through this. And there's a lot of work. We don't make our stuff accessible. We don't tag it. There's a lot of work just to get the basic foundation in place. And I'm glad to hear that this community is committed to it. Let's do it, because it matters. On top of that, boy, we've got to do a lot of work to demonstrate that what we're actually recommending is based on real data and that the correlations make sense. If we get this wrong, it matters a lot. One of the things that I encourage people to think about from an AI perspective is we have to be able to explain. We can't say, hey, the black box said so and so is going to do this. Not going to fly. For those of you that know the analytic community, we want to say with high confidence, this is likely what will happen under these circumstances. That's what we do. When we miss, it's a really bad thing. And that's the promise of AI. But we've got to be able to explain what we did with all that data to get to this recommendation. I think, unfortunately, litigation in the health and insurance fields will help us figure this out. We're seeing that start to emerge. But I will encourage you, we're better than that. This community is better than that. So helping us think through how we explain what the black box actually did so that we can have confidence in the recommendations that we make is really, really important. And as a collector, the thing I'm excited about is that if I can talk to an analyst and say, what would it take to move from medium to high confidence? And they say, these insights, now I know what to collect or what to target to collect. So understanding that full cycle for AI is really, really important to somebody like me who's part of, who's part of mission requires that I'm actually building collectors as well, which many of you collaborate on. And then last but not least, poisoning caches, to use a technical term, has been prevalent for the last decade on the internet. Right? And Yogesh talked about this too, about the security. We gotta make sure that the equivalent of our caches aren't poisoned which means that we cannot drop our guard with respect to what we're ingesting and what we're collecting. Because again, the consequences would be devastating. So not time to let up on the gas pedal on that one. So I want to thank you for being the partners that you are. I want to challenge you to think about how to operate higher in the stack with us and not argue about infrastructure, losing proposition. And then how can we partner differently so that we operate at the speed of mission as well as the speed of business? Have a great conference. Thank you very much.